In this video, we're going to start just adding some tools to the schematic so we can look at what the different inputs and outputs of the nodes are and what each color of an input or output of a node represent. And also, I'll talk about hotkeys and different ways of making connections between nodes. Down below in our editing panel, we know already we've got all these different bins filled with different tools and nodes, and there's some sub bins for specific tasks you want to perform. When you're looking at all nodes, you'll see all of them. Also, just quickly, you'll see an I.O. in the in out nodes over here. But we're going to look at these a little bit later. But right now, let's start adding some tools and start exploring exactly what batch is. A great hotkey to learn, mainly because there's a lot of tools in here, is if you know the name, you know the first letter of a tool and you hit that. So I want to find a color correction tool. If I hit the C key with my cursor over the bin here, you'll notice that only the tools that start with C are going to be highlighted. Then if I want to add a node into the schematic, I can just pick it up and drag and drop it directly into the schematic. So a couple things you're going to notice right away is my viewport now is displaying the end result of the color warper, which has no end result because there's nothing connected to it. If I click in this view, you'll see it reads result. I'm going to zoom in on these nodes so we can look at the colors and see exactly what is being represented here. Of course, I could hold control and spacebar and zoom in, but I'm going to actually drag the opposite way and zoom way out because I want to show you a great feature of using our navigator down here, especially when you have a really complicated schematic. If I want to zoom in on these nodes really quickly, hold the control key, and I just click and drag and region select where I want this schematic to zoom in on, and I release that, I release that, and it will jump and zoom in on that region that I just selected. All right, so a couple things we see on this node right away. We see this little red X, this warning sign up here. It's telling me something's not right. Well, what's not right is there's no input into this node, so that's why that is appearing. If we look down in the lower left corner, you'll see these two triangles down here. By clicking on that, it's going to bring up a console, which is your messages and your history of what has been taking place in Flame while I've been working. And it's telling me there's a pipeline error. Color Warper 71, that node, must have an input to the front to work. So that's what that is telling you. Let me click down to get rid of that. So that's what that little X, the red X, is telling me. There's an error because there's no input. Looking at our clip node, we'll see that there is a yellow output and a blue output. The yellow output is your result, the main output of this image, the RGB information. A blue output is the matte or alpha information coming from a node. And then we look at our color warper, we see that we have a red main input, also called the front input. There's a green background input, and there is a blue matte input. And then this tool has one yellow result, one main output. To connect the nodes is pretty straightforward. I click off the yellow result from my clip node, drop it onto the red, and it is now connected. You'll notice the little warning sign has disappeared because now my color warper has the proper input it needs. Now with the color warper selected, we see the end result of the color warper in this viewport, but down below, we're still looking at our effects nodes. There's two ways to access the parameters for this individual tool. If I just double click on it, that the editing panel just changed to give me all the information, all the parameters for the color warper. You can also use the effects node button right here to toggle on and off the effects node and go to look at the tools or the parameters for the currently selected node. And now if I select my clip node, you'll see that the editing panel changes to the clip node parameters. I select my color warper. Once again, I'm back at looking at the parameters for the color warper. Just a couple quick notes about working in batch. All the way over on the left hand side, you see a button that reads batch preferences. I click on that and I can access the different preferences relevant to working in batch. Okay, let me discard that by clicking on it to turn them off. There's also one that says node preference. If I click on that, you now receive preferences relevant to the currently selected node. And we'll re-examine these options a little bit later as we're working with different tools. I just wanted to point it out. You can also access your animation channels from here. There's also a timing tab to access the media inside of your batch environment and edit and change it if you wanted to. 
And then lastly, there's also the render list, which we'll look at later when we start to work on rendering our actual end result. So these buttons alone left will always be available to you no matter what part of batch you're in or what tool is selected, but the editing panel will change depending upon what tool you have selected. All right, back to working with our nodes. You can break or disconnect nodes by simply clicking down and dragging across the connection line between the two nodes. You'll notice that we get the minus sign. This is actually temporarily accessing a delete tool that will cut the connection. So I do that, I drag across, release, and we break that connection. You can also use what's called the kiss method of holding the shift key. And then when you kiss two nodes together, you will make the connection. Now be careful using the KISS method because as you can see here, I've just made a mistake. I connected my mat output from my clip note into the background input of my color warper. That's not what I really wanted. Let me drag across to disconnect those again. You can also just click an output to highlight it such as this. So I just click the main result from the clip note and I come over and right away I click on the red input for the color warper and my connection is made. This works great when you have nodes that are far apart from each other and you really don't want to drag them or move them around. You can just click on the output, then click on the input, and it will make the connection. Let me break that connection one more time. If you hold the Option key and hit the Shift key while you have a node selected, you're going to extend the input to easily be able to make a connection. I'm going to keep holding Shift, I release the Option key, and then I hit the Option key again. Now I'm extending the back, I'll release the Option key again, and then I'll hit the Option key while still holding Shift, and I extend my mat input. So this is actually one of my favorite ways of connecting the nodes. Holding the Shift, hit the Option key, I kiss the yellow result output of my clip note, and I've made my connection to my color warper. All right, for demonstration purposes, I want to talk about the mat input here. Obviously, what that allows us to do is control what pixels will be affected by the tool, in this case, the color warper. So for demonstration, I'm just going to make something really drastic. I'll take my black down a little bit. All right, so that's beautiful. Let's go back to our effects node for a second. I'm going to hit the G key to access my gradient tool. I'll drag my gradient tool into the view and this viewport over here, since it's set to look at the result of whatever node I have selected, is now showing me the main result of my gradient tool. Now I'm going to click on the main output of my gradient and click on the main input for my mat on the color warper. Then we'll select the color warper and we can see that the gradient is now controlling what pixels of the image in the color warper are being affected by its parameters. Now, if I want to adjust my gradient while looking at the color warper, let me zoom back just a little bit, we're kind of tight there. If I want to adjust my gradient while still seeing the end result of my color warper, we can use a context point for that. We mentioned this briefly earlier, but now we're gonna take a look at it. If I right click over my color warper, I can come down to where it reads set as context. And then you'll see I have 10 context points that I can set up. I will choose set as context one. Immediately next to the name of the node in the schematic, you'll see it read C1 in parentheses. It's telling me this is set up to be context one. Now, if I select my gradient, this viewport is still set to see the result of whatever node I'm selecting. So I'll click on that viewport to select it, to make it active, come over to where it reads viewing, click on the flyout, and I'll choose context one. I love the fact that it even tells you the name of the tool that is set as context one. Because when you're setting up many contexts, it's not always easy to remember what tool is set up for each context. But I'll choose that, and now you'll see we're looking at the end result of the color warper. Let me double click on the gradient so we can access its parameters. So now I'm looking at the end result of the color warper while accessing all the parameters of my gradient. And I can come into the viewport and grab the manipulator if I want, and I can change this or adjust it in any way. So when you set up a context, it doesn't matter what you select or what you have active inside your schematic, it's always going to be showing that context. If you want to clear a context, you can right click, go back to set as context, and you can choose clear context view, or you can choose clear all context view. We only have one, so I'll just choose clear context view, and you'll see this viewport now has nothing because there is no context one, so it doesn't know what to show. I'll hit the F4 key, which is going to set it to show the end result of whatever node I have selected again. I'm going to take the color warper, drag it to the bottom of the UI, throw it away, and I'm also going to take that gradient and throw that away. 